sit here with you. This is cool. Astronaut Jeremy Hansen is on a mission like no other, as later on next year he'll be the first Canadian to ever visit the moon as part of the Artemis II journey into deep space. Can we have a round of applause for someone who's about to make human history? Jeremy Hansen is in the house, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Oh, wow. Let's go. Too much. Oh, it is so great to have you in the studio, truly. Uh, this is going to be, I mean, I don't even know how to describe this experience. Artemis II's mission, for those who aren't fully aware, is what? So uh, it's a test flight. It's the first time we've put humans on this huge rocket with a new capsule called the Orion capsule to take humans back to the moon. Our job on two is to test that capsule. This will be the first time humans fly on it. And then on Artemis 3, 4, 5, that's where we're going back to the surface of the moon. But our job is to leave Earth. We'll spend about a day orbiting the Earth, testing this capsule, make sure it can actually go into deep space and keep us alive. And then we'll spend about another eight flying around the moon and coming back to Earth, landing in the Pacific Ocean. So, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong, and I've been wrong three times in my life, so it can happen again. <laughs> but the, the record for the deepest into space a human has ever gone, was it Apollo 13? Uh, 400,000 kilometers, I thought I read? Yeah, that makes sense, because they, they did that same sort of thing where they kind of used the moon to slingshot them back around and come In back. a rescue miss mission, essentially, yeah. for Jim Lovell and his crew. And they, and they intentionally, the thing about that mission, they intentionally sped them up to try and get them home, you know, just hours That's earlier, right. just to try and keep them alive. I mean, they were really on the, the, the edge of, of dying in Can space. Can you tell it's one of my favorite movies? <laughs> Can you tell it's one of my favorite movies? Mine too. Now, how, so how much further into space will you and the crew be going if 400,000 kilometers is the record for a human how 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 much longer will you travel now uh, it's around the same it depends when we launch so like launch day matters for where the moon is and the orbital mechanics the moon does get slightly closer and further so but we'll end up going about like eight ten thousand kilometers past the other side of the moon just depending on how it wow. all works out and that is around rough uh, roughly 400,000 kilometers and because most of us will never see the inside of this <laughs> capsule can you describe what it looks like feels like <laughs> yeah it's tiny so yeah, I mean, for, for a capsule it's pretty big like imagine we took this couch we're all sitting on and kind of closed it up that's about the diameter of the capsule okay and then you know we'd have like a little bit maybe up here and we would live in there together all of us plus one more pick someone else mm -hmm. and we'd be in there for for you know nine or ten days it's going to be we'll be ready to get out when we hit the facility nine or Let ten days how important is yeah. chemistry with the crew over nine and ten Truly. days because yeah. in every work environment chemistry i find is important, Jeremy. It is. You know where I'm going with this. How? What, what's the relationship like with your other uh, three incredible crewmates? It, it's super important. As a core, as an international core based in the Johnson Space Center in Houston, we, we actually spend a lot of time on this, talking about this, and, we're, and trying to like actively develop those skills, which really comes down to communication, open, honest communication, sure. working out problems when they're small before they become big. And uh, but so and I've been doing this with these people for you know 14 years now. Um, and so I, I don't have any reservations. I'm going with a great crew of people. Um, we're going to launch as friends. I guarantee we'll come back as friends. Awesome. And a lot of training, obviously, has, has gone into this. Yeah. I mean, um, would love to know a little bit about it and also just ask the question that I'm sure everyone's thinking right now. Are you nervous? <laughs> Um, well, I'll answer that part first. So okay. I, I, you know, I can't live nervous for like a year. Yeah. So no, I'm not nervous. But like day-to-day -day training, like that's pretty much all we talk about is the ways we could die and how we're going to mitigate those risks. And so it is very present, top of mind about you know what we're doing, what systems could fail, where if they fail here, how are we going to deal with it? I mean, that is what we talk about all the time. But you just you just kind of normalize it and you start to develop this confidence in the team that wow, yeah, we do have some pretty cool ideas and how we're going to handle these things if they come up. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I will have moments where I'm scared, no doubt. It's not now, but at some point, maybe the day before launch, I imagine when I'm saying goodbye and like kissing my kids and wife for that, you know, maybe the last time, that'll be emotional and probably scary. But when I know when it's game time, you know, on launch day, those will kind of melt away. It's just kind of how it works. You sort of compartmentalize and you focus on the job and you don't worry too much about that. Training is different for a mission like this because it's the first time. So like for something like Space Station, we have a well-developed training flow and you know what you're going to do like which week of the month. It's not like that for us. For us, we're testing. So when something is ready, when they finalize the design, we go test it right then and there. And it's sort of hard to, to predict what the training is going to look like. We're sort of making it up as we go. I, I know the, the point of this, this mission and the missions that will follow are to set a new course for humans in space because 
we may need it one day, and, and we may need the moon to act like a port, and we may need that port to send us to who knows where. Like, I, the, the structural aspect of what you guys are doing is unbelievable, obviously, but there is going to be that moment for you personally where you're going to have a view of our world no one's ever really seen. How often do you think of that moment? It comes up a lot in, uh, in conversation, and then it just sort of hits you. Like, when you say it, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, he's right. <laughs> it's going to be a big deal. Um, 24 humans have seen our planet in its, all its glory hanging, you know, the blue marble hanging in the vacuum of space. And uh, we'll be, you know, 25 through 28 to see that. It's a pretty remarkable opportunity. It's really important for us as a crew, for Kane Space Agency, that we bring that back to humanity. You know, I think all of us can look at the world today and be like, man, we could do better. You know we could do better as humans on this planet. And uh, this, you know, th this is not going to solve everything. Artemis II is not going to solve everything, but it is definitely a check mark in the wind column for humanity. This is people coming together, to create solutions that matter to make life better on the planet, to bring us together, to show one another. If we set big goals, we can do incredible things. And so, yeah, this is a check in the wind column, and we're excited to share that with humanity and to take, you know, take that picture, those that video of the sun, the the Earth rise from the other side of the moon. And share that back and just remind people, come on, folks, you know, this is all we got, this planet. Let's take care of one another and let's take care of it. Here, here, mm -hmm. especially now. Yeah. Um, let's talk again before November of next year. And, yeah. and God bless you and your family and our Canadian sp space program because you're representing a lot. And it's great to talk to you again. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, yeah. for ladies and gentlemen. Jeremy Hansen. Wow. Oh, thank you.